Hi there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make this heart stripe hot pad. I'm using Lily's Sugar and Cream. And I'll, I'll make the hot pad, I wanted to make it in a different color, but this color is called Tea Rose. And I'm also going to be using, this is Sea Breeze. And then this is white. And of course you'll need an H, five millimeter hook, Go ahead and start with 27 chains. I'm gonna put a few more on here and then let's get going. All right, another handy thing that, that you'll need is to go to our website and print off the graph. But, um, the graph will help you to know when to do the color changes. So if you have a copy of that handy and you've got your 27 chains, we can get started here. So the first row and what, um, you read the graph from right to left. And so number one is over here in the right hand corner. So this will be our first herringbone half double crochet stitch. And that's why we chain 27. There's only going to be 25 in each row. And then we'll have two turning chains and the turning chains do not count as a stitch. So we're just, each little box is just a herringbone half. So we'll work one row completely white, and then row two, we'll add in our first co uh, color on stitch number 13. So just as a reminder, a herringbone half is yarn over. I'm inserting my hook into the third chain from the hook for this first one, just underneath the top loop, yarning over, pulling up a loop, and then continuing to pull through the first loop on the hook. Then I'll yarn over and pull through two more. Let me do that one more time. Yarning over, inserting my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and continue pulling through the first loop. Then yarn over and pull through two. All right, do you have your 25 herringbone? I count, kind of like to count them, just I like to see this uh, little horizontal bar, I guess, across the bottom. Just count those if you're confused about how to count those stitches. So here I am at the end of the row and I'm going to chain two and turn, just like a page in a book. and work the first 12 and on stitch 13 we'll introduce the color. All right, so I just worked my 12th stitch. So I'm gonna count those little bumps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. This is my 12th stitch and the 13th stitch has color. So I will, before I finish that stitch, I just lay my yarn across the hook and pull it through the final two stitches, just like that. I'm gonna always wanna keep this yarn to the inside of the work because we don't have to crochet over this end so much as you'll you'll see what it looks like on the back here in just a second but anyway go ahead and work that stitch we're only working one so keep that to the inside of your work go ahead and pull up with the white now work the remaining 12 in white chain two and turn and then I'll show you how to pick up the color on the back of the work and work three more stitches in the color. Now here's something that might be happening to you is that you'll get this arched appearance 
Don't worry about that. That means that your chain is just a little bit tighter than your stitches right here, but with cotton, it stretches. So you just need to give it a little bit of a tug and it'll straighten right out. But it also might mean you need to keep these stitches just a little bit tighter as you go along. I'm working right. If you need to count down from the hook, don't count those first two turning chains. Work into that next stitch. That's your first stitch of the row. So here we go. We're working on row three of the graph. And the odd numbers on the graph are read right to left. And even, you read it left to right. So get your white stitches worked. And then we'll pull in on stitch number 11 with the new color. So work up to 11 stitches. Okay, this is the 11th stitch, so I'm just going to pull through one of the loops and I will keep the yarn now forward. So when you're working an odd row, this is the inside of the hot pad. This is not the right side, this is the wrong side. So we want all of that yarn to be to the inside so that we'll cover it up with the, the back of the hot pad and we won't have to weave in any ends. So I'm pulling through on that 11th stitch right there. You can kind of pull that and go ahead. It's your choice if you want to crochet over the white as you go. I kind of just left it hanging back and then I'll pull it back up. So it's up to you. But let's work into stitch number, and this is, can be a little bit tricky here, trying to find that little V right there. That is stitch number 12. Here's 13. And here's 14. Let's just work the first bit of that. Keep your yarn now to the inside. Here's our white that we left behind. And go ahead and pull that through. Okay, so you'll have a bunch of crisscrossed yarn in the back. But that will all be covered up because we'll, this is a two-sided hot pad. Okay, also keep that towards that side. We don't want it hanging out on the front of our work. Now work the rest of the row in white. So look how fast. We're already up to row five. So if you want to read it, we're our first will be on the ninth stitch. We'll work nine stitches in white and then work across for seven stitches and then probably end with nine. So that's all I'm doing is following the graph. So I'm gonna just show you how to pull up the yarn from on the, on the back here. So work nine in white. Okay, so here I am on the ninth stitch. I wanna make sure my white is pulled forward to the inside of the work, what will be the inside of the hot pad. Then I just pull my color, ah, get it on my hook and pull it across there. Kind of make sure the tension is good. It's not too tight, not too loose. And then work those stitches. Get that white out of the way, you're free to crochet over the white, like I said, if you want to. I just didn't want any of the white showing through the colored portions at all. So let's work those stitches. Now, sometimes I did end up working just over that end of the color and that was fine. But then after a while, I just went under it and left it like that. You're making seven on this one. Here's our seventh one. Make sure your tail goes to the inside of the work. Let's grab the white, pull that across. Now continue working.
Okay, I'm gonna show you the next row and then I'm pretty sure you've got it clear till the end. Okay, I've worked the first eight stitches in white and now I'm leaving the, this is leaving that white tail to the back or the inside of the work. This is the right side. This will be shown on our heart. So we never want those tails to be on that side of the work. So now I'll pull through with the teal and I'm going to work across. I believe there will be nine stitches in this color. There we go. Leave it to the back. Come and find my white and pull that through, pull that across, and then stitch to the end. Okay, so I'm going to keep working. See, here's how the back of my work looks. I want all of those ends on what will be the inside of the hot pad. Okay, so finish the graph out and then I'll show you how to, how I, and then actually just make a whole nother pad of all herringbone. And then I'll show you how I attach them together and put that cute border on. So I hope it's been going well for you. Here is my completed um, heart. This is what the inside of my work looks like because I didn't carry the yarn through. I just kept pulling it up when I needed it so that all these messy ends will be hidden though when we make another panel and attach it. So before finishing this though, I like to chain one and then turn. We'll finish that last row. And then I'll go ahead and work two single crochets and work a round of single crochets around the whole hot pad before I tie off and get ready to make my other the other side. I also like to skip one and then work two into every one. And I do the same on the sides of the hot pad. And then it just makes it easier when we join for that um, the puff border that we're going to work. So if you wanna work, um, I'm gonna work two single crochets, skip one stitch, two single crochets. When I get to the corner stitch, I like to work three single crochets into the corner. So now as I work down one side, I will like to choose the same spot at the end of the row to work my two single crochets and then I'll skip the next row and this next row happens to be those two turning chains so I'll come down here skip over them and work my two single crochets right here now this will be just so it will look more even And I think that looks a lot neater. Okay, same thing on the bottom is that I worked the three here into the corner and then I'll skip and then I'll work two. All right, I just finished making just a solid color, same, um, and now let's uh, same width and height as this original one. 
And I worked my one round of single crochet and now I'm ready to put this together. So I'm just gonna match it up, make sure all those ends, and I didn't even bother weaving these ends in. I just, I guess we could tie them to make sure they don't come loose. Um, that would be fine. And uh, that's easy, done. And so we'll just match these two together. And I like working my single crochet round with the um, teal side facing me for this first round because here's why. I want the puffs when I do this round, I want these, the puffs, I'm always working counterclockwise. So I want the front side of those to show. But they look pretty much similar. I mean, they do look really pretty close, so you don't have to be too much of a stickler on that. But anyway, that's just me. So I will actually chain one and turn. And all I need to do now is you just match up the single crochets that you've worked. Try and get this corner one together. This will be the toughest one. And then work single crochet around the entire hot pad and then we'll start with that puff border there we go here we go now we're out of that corner so just insert your hook underneath both of the V's and uh, work a single crochet so after you work all your single crochet around the border or the edge I am now slip stitching to the very first single crochet and I will chain two and then turn my work and here we go now, if you don't want to put that puff edge on, you could stop right here. This looks cute, um, but here we go. This is what I did for the puff edge. So I will work right into this first single crochet with a half double crochet, just like that. And then I'm going to insert my hook around the post Kind of in between the chain and the post this is just for this first one it'll be easier going forward and then pull through I just create that puff now skip one and work into the next one start with by yarning over inserting your hook pulling up a loop and making a half double crochet then yarn over insert your hook around the post of that half double crochet yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over again insert your hook around the post yarn over pull the loop back through then yarn over and pull through all of those loops so here's the first corner and all i do is instead of skipping a stitch i'll just work into the next stitch and that should give you enough room to get around the corner. So I'm not skipping a stitch for these three, two, three little corner puffs. And now I'll just, now I'll skip a stitch. Work down the edges. Okay, I'm gonna finish this round and I'll show you how I tie off and finish. And now here I am at the very last puff. So this is our chain two and turn right here. So I will just work my half double crochet, get my puff around it. Oops, there we go pull through and then all I'm going to do is join with a slip stitch to the top of that stitch and then I will chain one tighten that down and pull cut 
I and pull through and then I will um, weave that end in. So now you have your pretty little hot pad. They are, forgot, I keep meaning to say they're about 10 inches and they do grow. Look at that mine, because I think I've been using that other one as a prop. But anyway, the cotton will stretch out and you can get it all into place, make it look really good. And there you go. So thank you so much for coming by our YouTube channel. You know we have, we're all on everything, Instagram. I even just joined TikTok so that I can start sharing more of my stitches there. We're on Facebook. We have a Facebook group that you can come and join if you need help with some of our patterns or wanting to increase your skills or learn new things or have a question about a Daisy Farm blanket. And then we also, of course, you can follow us on Pinterest or sign up for our newsletter. There's just lots of ways. So anyway, thank you so much for coming by. And I can't wait to see some of your Stripe Heart Hot Pads. Come and share with us.